Hello and welcome to The Silent Why. I'm Claire Sands, host, blog writer and Herman maker. More on the podcast show notes about all of that. But I wanted to put this quick intro in front of another episode that I'm re-releasing today, especially timed for Mother's Day in the UK. And also for those of you that have got Mother's Day coming up in May. Last year, I released a special episode a day or so after Mother's Day, where I sat down at the mic and for the first time did an unscripted, just chat to myself type episode about Mother's Day and where I was with it all. It contained all kinds of thoughts on Mother's Day from a childless woman who's been through many years of them and how I felt about it that year and over the years. It was so well received that I thought I'd put it out again this year. I did think about doing another similar episode, but to be honest, not a lot has changed. My feelings are still the same as they were last year, and although I don't know how this year's going to go, because I'm putting this one out a day before Mother's Day, if it's really bad or really good, then I know I'll end up posting about it on social media, or even doing a blog, so you'll find out anyway. So here it is, my unscripted thoughts on Mother's Day. I hope it will encourage those of you that find it a hard day, for whatever reason, not just those that aren't mothers, and maybe encourage those of you that find it's a day that sort of alienates you for some reason. And my overall advice is, don't give it more power than it deserves. And if you'd like to encourage me this Mother's Day, don't forget you can support my work by buying me a fancy tea or two at buymeacoffee.com slash the silent why, or you can buy a Herman to send to someone who needs to know they're not alone right now. A great idea for Mother's Day for those that find it difficult. And that also supports the work of the podcast and the Herman Company. So thank you all so much for listening. Now I'm going to hand over to 2023 me. (coughs) Hello and welcome to the Silent Wine podcast. I'm Claire Sands, host, and this is an episode with a bit of a difference. I've switched the microphone on. I just have a few notes on my super note. No guest with me. And I'm just going to talk. So let's see how this goes. There might be a few more ums than you're used to, but we're going to roll with it. I'm just winging it because I wanted to try something different. I didn't quite know what to do this episode on, I'll be honest. We went away for a few days and I just thought, what should I put out next week? But then yesterday in the UK was Mother's Day. And I thought, well, that's a big area for a lot of people. A lot of people who have suffered grief and loss as well. So why not do an episode talking about where I am now with Mother's Day? Because I've been on the childless journey for at least 12 years. So I've been through a lot of Mother's Day. I'm also part of the Christian church here in the UK. So therefore, I've been through a lot of Mother's Day services, which are pretty painful for a lot of people. So I thought I'd just share where I am with that and why yesterday was actually quite a good day for me. That's what I'm going to do. So if you haven't been here before, this is a podcast about grief and loss. But it's not as depressing as it sounds because we're looking for hope and joy to see if it can exist in every kind of loss. Maybe it can, maybe it can't. We're going to find out. So we're looking for 101 different types. And normally I'm chatting to guests or I've got my husband here with me or I'm reading an audio blog that I'm putting out as a podcast episode, but not today. As someone who's been through lots of different types of grief and loss, most of my blogs or my chatting or the interviews will come from that place and that grounding So myself and Chris discovered that he was infertile in 2010. And since then, we've been through a number of different things, including um, endometriosis and PMDD on my side, and then a hysterectomy when I was 38. So we found ourselves in the category of childless, not by choice. And that's just been our experience. So a lot of Mother's Day, a lot of Father's Day, a lot of Christmases, a lot of things have happened and come and gone when we've been in very different places with our grief. And so we've learned a lot along the way. And that's part of what I wanted to share, because where I am today is very different from where I was a few years ago. It's very different from last year. I know it'll be different from next year. But yesterday was actually quite a good day as far as Mother's Days go. So I just wanted to share a bit about how I got to that point and why I think it was better this year than maybe it has been before. So in the UK, it was Mother's Day yesterday as I record this, which is March in the UK. And Mother's Day is one of those things that seems to divide the population, especially females, I think. Um, There's this sort of feeling that either you're in one camp or you're in the other camp. And so it's something, especially amongst the childless community and other communities of people who've lost their mothers and all kinds of things like that, where I think it becomes this thing that wants to highlight everything that some women don't have or can't be. I've been through a lot of these as a childless woman and I wanted to just kind of give you a little bit of an insight into how I've coped with them and why I feel like this year I'm actually in a better place than I was perhaps any other year before that. It doesn't mean I'm under the illusion that 
that is the case from now on. But um, when you have a good year with these things, sometimes it's worth just looking back and thinking, how did I get here? Because it doesn't just happen overnight. So I thought I'd start by giving us a bit of a potted history on what Mother's Day is, because that for me was actually really helpful. And this is based on the UK history. I don't think this is the case for other countries, so excuse me there. But for Mother's Day, it's always on the fourth Sunday of Lent. So the date can move around a bit, but it's generally always on the fourth Sunday of Lent. And traditionally, going back, it was a day when children, mainly daughters, working as domestic servants, were given the day off to visit their mother and family. And initially, it was called Mothering Sunday. So Mother's Day is sort of what's been taken on, I think, by other countries. But over here, the proper name for it is Mothering Sunday. And on this Sunday, the daughters that would go home to visit their families and people who had the day off would return to their mother church. Now, during the rest of the year, and I didn't know any of this, people would normally go to their parish church, which was local, and they were called daughter churches. And there would be one mother church, I guess, for that area that oversaw all the other churches. So normally you go to the daughter church, which was whatever your local parish was, but once a year you would return to your mother church. And that's where Mothering Sunday came from. Um, And it was a day of honouring these mother churches and people all returning to those. And this started around the 16th century. So it's a long, long history. And I think it's got a little bit skewed from its original meaning. I wonder if back then when they were celebrating these mother churches and gathering together, it was more of a celebration of something very different from what we do now, where we specifically relate it to mothers. But anyway, that's it. And now more than 50 countries celebrate Mother's Day. But I don't know if that's just come off the back of the UK Mothering Sunday or if they've got their own separate traditions. A lot of other countries that don't do Mother's Day do have an International Women's Day instead. So there's a different kind of way of doing it, which probably sounds a lot healthier if you ask me. So I just thought I'd want to share a few thoughts with you, um, having been through many Mother's Days as a childless woman. And it's not something I talk a lot about specifically um, because the podcast does focus on grief and loss and I wanted that to be all kinds. But as those of you who have heard my blogs will know, a lot of it comes from that sort of place and it's a huge part of my identity and the life that I've lived. So it can't help but filter into a lot of things. But this is more specifically about what it's like for me not having children on Mother's Day. And if you want to know more about our childless journey and what that looked like between us, then you can listen to episode three of the podcast where I chat with Chris about that in a lot more detail. So I've never been the kind of woman who just breaks down in front of others about childlessness. Um, It's rare for me to get emotional like that with other people. It's just not who I am. I'm the same with any subject. So if I get like that, it tends to be that I'm probably at the end of my tether with something or that I've just been caught in a very vulnerable but safe place with people and I felt that you know the emotions have come through I just let that happen but it's hard for me to let that happen so I'm not the kind of person who would just walk into church and just sit there and cry through a Mother's Day service or dedication that doesn't mean it's not hard for me um, or that I might not go home and do that afterwards but I'm just not a publicly emotional person like that. I'd like to be a lot more and I'm working on it, but it's just it's just not my, my story at the moment. So although I'm, I've grown up in the church and I've been to many Mothering Day church services, I, I tended to not avoid them. So because it, I didn't get like overly upset at them, I felt like I should be there. And I really didn't want to be excluded in that way. I didn't want to feel like it was my job to stay at home and not be part of it. So I've always gone along and I think that's had its pros and cons along the way it massively depends what church you're in and I think Mothering Sunday is because it's a church-based thing it is something that's acknowledged in churches so if you're part of any kind of faith community like that there's a chance you have a harder time avoiding it and you have to make more conscious decisions about it than you might have to if you're not part of a church where you could probably just hide away and not really look at it too much apart from when it's you know in the shops and popping into your inbox every 10 seconds for presents so it's it's a hard thing because people who go into church are quite often faced with situations where, well, you don't know what you're going to be faced with first off, but you're quite often faced with situations that can be very painful and very isolating. Experiences I've heard range from, um, you know, the person at the front asking mothers to stand up so they can be honoured, which leaves anyone who's not a mother sitting down. Generally, there's this sort of tradition of handing out flowers to all the women in the church, which is a lovely idea because I've been to some churches where it would have been handing out flowers to the mothers in the church which is again very hurtful and isolating 
handing out flowers to everyone in the church. Lovely idea, but they do tend to still get the kids to go and get the flowers and take them to the women. And kids, especially young kids, or and even older kids, it's embarrassing, isn't it, to take flowers to someone you don't know. So ultimately, they all run back to people they know and their parents with flowers, and then they get told to go back and get some more and find a woman who hasn't got any. Then they get to the point where it's like, put your hand up if you haven't received any yet. I've been there and not put my hand up. It just feels too embarrassing that no child came to find you. There's there's a lot of situations like that that happen, which just make people feel bad, let alone, you know, mothers standing up and saying what a blessing motherhood is or people at the front saying what a blessing it is to be a mother. There's a lot of people who are not intentionally hurtful, just but just a bit careless with their words in church sometimes. So there's a lot of experiences like that, and I can see why people avoid that. There has been Sundays when I haven't gone on Mothering Sunday. It's not that I've never done that. I, I have been in a place where I just thought, you know, I just need to skip this. But it frustrates me that anyone should not go to church because of that, that anyone feels isolated or like they don't fit in. And that is the case with many groups of people I know. But for me, I felt like if I wasn't going to keep going and witness what was happening and then try and change it, how was it ever going to change for the women coming up behind me? So I've always wanted to try and go and do what I can to highlight things maybe if they were a bit insensitive or just endure it with anyone else that's there that's going through it and that's been my strategy just not everyone's strategy and I totally get that but that's what I decided to do possibly I didn't deal with what I was feeling as much because that's how I do things but yeah that's what I've done I focused on trying to be strong and mostly it worked I think it's catching up on me but anyway um so anyway yeah so you get these situations which leave people feeling very out of the loop and I think part of the problem with it is is it makes you focus on the what you don't have, on your lack, in a way that you probably wouldn't have done that Sunday if it hadn't have been Mothering Sunday. And that's what I don't like. Nothing should really, no one day of the year should make people focus on what they don't have and who they can't be. And that's what this does. It, it celebrates one side, yeah, but it also highlights stuff for other people. And that's not the intention, but it is what happens and it just doesn't seem right in some way. I feel like there's better ways to do it if we have to do it as a nation. I did find that as I grew older and my friends started to have children, it got harder because initially where there was a a row of us perhaps who were just either single or newly married without children, you're all in the same kind of boat. As your friends have children and move past you, it feels like they enjoy it and become part of what's happening with the celebration in a new way, which is lovely for them, but it leaves you behind and there's an extra isolation there with that. And I do find a lot of people and this is going to sound a little critical but a lot of people do seem to find that hard when they don't have children and then go on to have children and forget about what it felt like before and that's sad that makes me sad because you know I was looking through my contacts yesterday on Mothering Sunday and I wanted to contact people who I knew would find today hard and I'd had some lovely words from someone in Australia a new a new friend that we've got in touch with through the podcast who's also childless. She messaged me and said, I heard it's Mother's Day in the UK and I'm thinking about you and she was praying for us. And it was so, so lovely the way she worded it that I said, I'm going to use that to send it on to the people that I want to message today. So I I messaged people and said, you know, these are the words I've just been sent. I want to pass them on to you. And I was looking through my contact list in my phone because I was desperate not to miss out anybody that might be struggling with the day. I'm sure I did, but I tried my best to find them. And in looking through there, I was so conscious of how many people over the years I've sat with who didn't have children or who weren't married, who were struggling with that situation and who I was trying to help and encourage, but who now have children. And I haven't seen that looking back to help others or to reach out to me in any way. And I think it's not that I did it because I wanted that, but I felt like if they were doing that with me, they might be doing it with others. And that's kind of how we help each other. And I've got friends that do reach back and they're beautiful and amazing. But I think even they would say they're doing it because of me and a lot of the stuff I've done either, you know, with them in friendship or being honest with them or in conversations or through the podcast. Otherwise, they wouldn't necessarily have thought about it. And I think that's really important. So it's a lonely journey as much as anything. And I've I've found that, that quite difficult. And again, would I really notice half of this if there wasn't a Mother's Day? I don't know, possibly not, but that's where we are. So this year was actually a good Mother's Day for me. And um, some of you listening to this who are looking for a bit of hope and inspiration and comfort might be like, oh, you know, bully for you. You had a good Mother's Day. Well done. Um, That's like one in, you know, what am I now? Like 42. I'm 42 years old. 
I've never had a Mother's Day really where I've been like, that was amazing because I'm not a mother. So I think for me to say, actually, this was good, I think, you know, that's growth. And I want that to encourage anybody who's in the early stages where they just cannot see how that would happen because I'm not expecting you to be there now, nor will you probably be there next year. It takes a lot of time of working out your own way to do it. And women have found their own way to do it, but it takes time and practice. And that might be spending a day with yourself and just kind of doing all the lovely things that you would do for a mother or you'd want done for you if you were a mother. You just do them to yourselves. You know, you give yourself a relaxing day. You give yourself a nice meal. You have a nice bubble bath. Whatever you need to do, you do it to make yourself feel good. For others, it might be mothering other people or something else or, or doing something consciously to, to make yourself feel good about the other ways that you could be a mother and a role model. For some people, it's changing up how things are done in church, in other groups of people. It's educating. There's lots of ways for you to find your path eventually, but don't rush it. So I want you to know that everything I'm saying is coming from a long journey. It's not something that happened overnight. So why was it a good day? Well, I had some lovely friends acknowledge it. I had messages and I had a lovely hand embroidered gift from uh, my good friend Grace, who has been on this journey with me for a long time. And I think she would say is still learning a lot about it as am I you know about motherhood through her and she'd put something through my door the day before to open on Sunday and it was beautiful and personal and I was so grateful for it and that just started my day off really beautifully because someone was thinking about me not just on the day but they were thinking about me ahead of time and that's lovely and I'd really encourage people if you know someone in your life that might find it difficult for for all the reasons not just being childless then it means a lot for them to know they were thought of. You don't need the right words. You don't need to do gifts. You just need to just know that you're there. You know, I had a lovely, another friend that just sent me the emoji with a bunch of flowers and three kisses. I love that. That's just like, maybe I don't know what to say right now, but I'm thinking about you and, you know, this is a day when you come to mind. Great idea. I would really encourage you to, to get on board with that if you can. And I know Mother's Day in almost every other country is coming up in May. So here's your opportunity for those of you who've got it coming to just look back maybe at people who are behind you on the journey of family life or those who do feel a bit left behind or those on a very different path. Anyone who might be struggling with it, I just really encourage you just to to get in touch because that means the world. I also had a good day at church yesterday. We're a part of a, a church we haven't been at for too long. It's quite new and it's set up in many ways. In other ways, it goes back hundreds of years. But it's um, the the vicar and his wife who are there, our friends of ours, before they were at the church here. And they know our journey well and are very conscious of our journey. And I really believe that knowing a lot about us and us being very open with them has been what shaped this first Mother's Day that I was a part of at this church. And it was beautiful. They read out uh, a lovely poem. I don't know. It was said as a prayer. I think it was written initially as as a sort of statement all about the different types of mothers there are and the different types of mothering and the different types of pain that Mother's Day brings and how we see those people and I'm actually going to read that at the end of this to finish off but it was a lovely uh, service I was only in there for half of it because I was on coffee so I went out to do the tea and coffee halfway through I had one of the older lads in our church brought me some flowers afterwards that they'd given out in church which I thought was lovely and then one of the younger lads who was about five came up with his dad and handed me some flowers so just lovely thoughts again of just being like we see you and we know this is a tricky journey for you and that has come from being open about our story and we've been open about our story from day one which I know a lot of people aren't that was our choice it wasn't the easiest choice there's pros and cons for doing that but I do feel that over the years the more you are open with people as you meet them the more it raises awareness of your situation And I think it slowly starts to get into the psyche of people that actually there are other journeys amongst us that haven't been the same when it comes to motherhood. So that was really lovely and that really made the day feel good. And I feel like overall, I'm just learning to refocus. And that I think that's the key. That's the one thing I want to give you for this Mother's Day is refocus. It seems to be the thing when I hear people talking about Mother's Day a lot that has really helped them along their journey refocusing whether that's on what you do on Mother's Day what Mother's Day is about how it works anything like that so why is it so hard I was jotting down some notes yesterday about why it's hard on my super note I love my super note you've probably seen it on my social media it's amazing so why is it hard I think there's lots of reasons why Mother's Day is hard 
firstly, it's asking us to celebrate something that not everyone has a great relationship with, motherhood. Whether that's the fact you don't have children yourself, whether it's the fact that you've got a tricky relationship with your mother, whether you don't have a mother. And there's so many other things in between. I'm not even going to start to list them because I know that I will miss out some reasons that people find this day hard. And I think the other thing is that we celebrate it so easily, but it's something that excludes instead of includes people. It's highlighting people for something they don't have. And I think that's the tricky bit about it. Church culture has done that. The cards in the shops have done that. The fact that it's everywhere on your social media and, you know, in your inbox from companies offering gifts for Mother's Day. I mean, shopping for a Mother's Day card, I think most people would say, is really hard work because there's a very general Happy Mother's Day, which doesn't say much. And then there's the one that just gush over, you know, these long poems or the best mother in the world. I couldn't have done everything without you. And, you know, I don't think that's the reality of a lot of people's relationships with their mothers. I don't think my mother would expect a card like that from me. It's not really who I am as a person about anything in life. I don't even buy those for my husband. I don't think my mother would have bought them for her mother. She certainly wouldn't have appreciated it. It pushes you into this, should I have that kind of relationship? Is that how I should be feeling on a daily basis? And if I don't, why would I just buy a card for now? So it's complicated. It pushes you into thinking about things that you probably don't need to think about that otherwise would would just be something you, you would put to one side or not even consider at all. It's a strange dynamic, I think, that it pushes us into thinking about stuff that we wouldn't otherwise think about. It also brings up really big, complicated issues, hurts and conversations, possibly things that you don't even speak about with your family. Suddenly, you're forced into this situation where people might be looking at you to wonder if if you are a mother, why aren't you a mother? Is that awkward for you as not being a mother? There's all these questions that you might not have actually worked out the answers to and how you feel about yourself they're suddenly thrown up into society. So you have to look at them and analyse them or even answer questions about them. And that's not really helpful. I think it also fuels expectations. You know, as children, if you grew up in a household where Mother's Day was celebrated and you lavished all this stuff on your mum and you gave her, you know, breakfast in bed and then lots of presents and then you do a card and then it's all about her for the whole day. What expectations are you giving your children? Well, if you've got girls there, you're giving them the expectation that one day they're going to get the same treatment. And you grow up with that for a long time. Your whole life, actually, is, you know, you're you're there to celebrate and honour your mother. But then if it never happens for you, that's just been something that's been set up for you to fail, really, in some way. That never happens for you. And there's this weird dynamic where you feel like you never fully grow up because you're always doing stuff for your mums. But at the same time, you're not actually ever getting it back yourself. And it's, I don't think that's helpful either. I think if I were raising a family now, I would redefine that a little bit and maybe say well you know what we do a big thing for birthdays we've got our own private anniversaries where we celebrate stuff our family did or something mum achieved something specific like that but I don't know that I would encourage this kind of big deal when it comes to Mother's Day and it's not actually ever been a big thing in our family my mum's not you know that kind of person that needs that sort of celebration but I do think that it's it's something that when you make it a, a large event in your house for your kids to get a part of, it sets them up for something that they need to be doing forever. It also means you guilt them into needing to make a big deal of it about you as a mum forever as well. And I don't know that that's always fair. So I think there are other ways to do it. And I think one of the worst things about Mother's Day is that it can actually make you question your worth, your contribution to society, to your family and even your identity. And that's not something that anybody should be made to do because of a commercial day. And I do think it's a commercial day, even though the history here goes back, you know, many centuries. We've made it commercial. And that's a shame because it's not having the positive impact, I think, that it maybe once did. So I think that's largely why it's hard. So how could we approach it? Well, firstly, I think we need to remember some things because it's very easy to let the pain and the hurt of Mother's Day take over and drown out everything else that might be going on. I think it's important to remember we all have a biological mother. You literally can't be here without one. So therefore, it is a relevant day for everybody. Everybody has a connection to this day in some way, shape or form because everybody has a biological mother. That biological mother might not be the person that raised you. It might not be the person that gave birth to you nowadays, but it is something that everybody has and it is complicated. So it's not easy for everybody. And I think that is worth remembering. Secondly, the odds are most people find it hard in some way, shape or form, even if they're not letting on. Just looking at percentages, 
people's relationships with their mothers, if they have one, people having children or not having them, people having complicated relationships with their children, they are big, very common situations. And I can't believe anyone out there escapes all three. So chances are Mother's Day is not always as straightforward as it might look for everyone on the outside. Also, people cope with things differently. So you can't assume the fact that somebody's got their children around them and looks like they're being showered with gifts on Mother's Day and seemingly happy and not breaking down in tears. You can't assume that means they're finding that easy or okay or they haven't got some sort of pain there. So I think we have to be careful, especially as childless people, we can feel like we've got the monopoly on the pain for Mother's Day. It's really important to know there are a lot of pains when it comes to Mother's Day and they're not all wrapped up in someone sat alone in church crying. They can be there even amongst what looks like to us the very happy family setup. And we also need to remember that it does not define you. Don't give one commercial day of the year more power than it deserves. Don't let it derail your day, your week, your month or your year any more than it needs to. And some years it will, but other years it won't. And don't allow it to do it anyway, just because it is what it is and it can make you sad. And I think the answer to get round all this stuff that makes it hard, well, what I wrote down yesterday in capital letters with an exclamation mark afterwards, refocus. The important thing for Mother's Day is to refocus. You need to choose where you want to focus. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, anniversaries, all these days that are difficult for us, that are hard, that bring us pain, you can choose where your focus is on all of them. And having spoken to so many people on the podcast about grief and all these anniversaries that come round and these painful times, those that are getting through it, those that are choosing to move past it are doing so because they refocused on what it was that they needed to refocus on. And again, this will be very different for everybody, so I'm not going to try and tell you this is where you need to refocus. But sometimes it does need to be sad. Sometimes you need to focus on something that makes you sad. That's important. But other times, when you've been there and done that, there comes a point when you just know that you need to refocus on something different if you're ever going to get out of it. And some people don't get out of it. Some people don't want to get out of it. But if you do, then I really, really encourage you to work out how and where to refocus. The definition of refocusing is to change the emphasis or direction of or to readjust. And there's a story that I read on the internet a while ago, which was about somebody doing a lecture somewhere and they were doing an example and they held up a glass of water. And the class thought they were going to talk about the fact that it was, you know, glass half full, glass half empty. But what they were actually saying was, if I hold up this glass of water for a minute, it's no big deal, right? You just hold it up. There it is. You can see it. If you hold that glass of water up for an hour, your arm really starts to ache. It starts to hurt. In fact, 10 minutes probably. And then if you hold it for an hour, you've probably got one of those arms that's just absolutely killing you. And there'll come a point when you just can't bear it anymore. It's just going to be too big. And the longer you focus on that, the longer your focus is on trying to hold up this thing that's getting heavier and heavier, the more overwhelmed you get and the harder it becomes. And you get to a point where you just can't do it anymore. And that's what happens when you focus on the bad things. When you look at something bad or painful or sad or hurtful about your situation, when you look at it briefly, you see the pain and you know it's there, but it's not overwhelming you. When you focus on it and you dwell on it for a long time and you stay in that place, it becomes overwhelming and it becomes too big for you to deal with. And there's times when you don't have a choice where you focus. I get that. With grief, it's just all around you. You can't even refocus. But as you start to move out of that and where I am now, 10, 12 years down the line, I recognize that if I didn't refocus, I was never going to find another way to live. And I needed to find another way to live my life. So I chose to refocus and I'm trying to refocus. And yeah, sometimes, you know, when you're trying to focus a camera, it goes all blurry and you can't see what's happening and it won't quite focus in on what you want. And you get all frustrated. But other times I just know that even if it won't quite get there, I need to try and refocus on something else. I need to point my emphasis in a different direction or else it's just going to be too much. And the thing is, when you focus on the bad the whole time, not only does it start to paralyze you because you can't move out of it, but it also blocks you from seeing the good. It blinds you to anything else that's happening. It becomes your whole world. And that can be a dangerous place to stay if you want to eventually try and find the good things in life again, the hope, the laughter, the smiles, the love. It can blind you to those things when they're coming at you because your focus is only on what hurts. However, if you focus on something lovely, if you focus on the beauty of a flower, 
if you focus on someone that you love to pieces, if you focus on nature, if you sit by a still brook, if you just kind of envelop yourself in calmness, if you focus on God, if you have a faith, if you focus or just sit in music that you love or art, if you love walking, breathing, just relaxing, the longer we focus on those things or even do it, the better we feel, the more relaxed, reassured, refilled and revitalized we get. The longer you sit with the good stuff, the better you feel. And I think that's really important. When you refocus a camera, it will see the detail more clearly. It provides this clarity. And when you focus on good things, you start to get more clarity on your situation and it actually helps you refocus the bad stuff. It gives you a different emphasis on that and it helps you see it in the light of other stuff. So I think it's really important to just look at what are you focusing on? If you've got a choice to focus right now, and I know some of you won't, but if you do, what are you focusing on? Are you focusing what you don't have? The misery, the pain, everything that you won't have going forwards, all the problems that might come up. Who's going to look after you when you're old? Why don't I have a mum like other people? All the big questions that come up. Or are you focusing on the good things? What if you focused on who you are outside of the painful situation? What you actually have in life? What if you focus on the good things around you? Even if they're hard to find and you need to actually sit down and find them. Maybe you've been blinded to them and you need to work your way out of that to see what's actually around you. What about who's with you in it or what brings you joy no matter how small? What about the fact that you're alive and you're breathing and you've made it this far and that is amazing? Maybe you need to question why it's such a big deal. Is there some stuff you still need to deal with that you're battling through? Why does it still hurt me so much? Why do I find that so hard? Maybe it's what you can do to change things. And then eventually, you'll find that as you focus on these good things, healing will come. It won't be easy. It won't just be happy and never sad again. But you'll find that you have more control of what these things can do to you. And you've got a base to come back to when you get sad and it brings you down. There's this place that you can come back to, to refill and just heal. And then one day, maybe further down the line, it goes even beyond that. And you can start helping others that are in that situation. And that's the point I got to with the podcast. I've learned I'm still on a journey. I've still got a lot to do. In fact, reaching out to help others has taught me how much I still have to deal with myself. But I wanted to be a voice for other people to just show them that, yes, this is how awful life is. This is how hard it is. This is all the tragic, heartbreaking stuff that happens in the world. But look at all these amazing people, the resilience, the hope. Every single episode of the podcast has taught me something about being a better person, being a strong person, how to get through things, how to just endure. And I'm so grateful for it. And I think if we can all get to that place one day, where we can just take our pain and use it and mould it so that we can help others to get through theirs, well, the world's going to be such a better place. If I can help shape and educate people who can educate their children about what it's like for people who are childless, then that's what changes the world eventually. And it can't hurt. And it definitely helps when I refocus on those sorts of things rather than on my own pain and grief. While also remembering there is a time to focus on your own pain and grief and that is important. So I want to point out again that this isn't about ignoring the pain. It does need dealing with. But I don't think we need to let Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas or any of those steer that conversation or the thought process. And I think it has the capability to do that. So if you've been in a good place this year and Mother's Day is what brings you down, don't give it that much power in your life. If you're in a bad place and it's making you feel worse, don't give it that much power either. Do what you need to do to get through it. Ignore it if you have to. Shut yourself away. Pretend it never happened. But don't let it have any more power than it needs to in the journey that you're on and the conversations that you're having and the healing works that you're doing. And remember, celebrating mothers isn't kicking those in the face without children. That's not the intention of the day, and it's not what people are looking to do. It's just how it feels. It's not intentionally out to get you, even if it feels that way. I think it's important we try and reshape it rather than hate it. I also want to say for those in the Christian community that motherhood is not a special blessing or favoritism from God. 
that's a theology that's out there and it's very damaging. It's not a personal thing. It feels personal, but it's not. We're in a broken world. It's not how things are supposed to work. It's not how we were designed to be, but it is the situation that we're in and God is in it with us. I find it really hard when I hear women saying that they believe others have been blessed and they haven't. Like it's some sort of special privilege that only some get and you, there's a reason why you haven't got it because you're not good enough. That is not true. So I just want to break that off anyone who's feeling that. And also remember that you get to choose how you see it and treat it. But it's not easy. Like with any other choice, there's so many choices in life. They don't seem fair to have to make and they're horribly hard, but it is a choice. And if you're that person right now that needs to hear that, then take it on board. It's a choice how you see Mother's Day. It's a choice to work out what you want to focus on and whether you're strong enough to go out and change the narrative in churches and other places or whether you just need to avoid it and hide. It's a choice. So make sure that you choose the right choices for you. But no one can do it for you. And I've learned that over and over. We can't rely on others to do it for us. We can't rely on the nation to change. We can't rely on people to suddenly realise what it's like. We can't rely on all churches to suddenly find a way to navigate all the pain. It's not going to happen. No one can do it for you. You've got to work out your own way through this. But there are communities of people that want to help you with that. So find your community because there are people finding it just as hard for the same reasons. And if you can find them and share with them, whether it's on a Facebook group, whether it's in person, you'll feel so much better knowing that you're not alone. So if you need to hide and cry, hide and cry. If you need to get up, put your big girl pants on and show people how to do it differently, do that. If you need help, ask. Ask someone to help you. If you need to be understood, try and share with somebody so they can understand. And if you need community, go and find it. So, Mother's Day, Father's Day, I see you. I see the good that you can bring. I see the love that you evoke. But I'm not going to focus on that. It's too painful for me. And that's okay. My focus is on how well I've done to navigate this painful path. My focus is on how brave I am to walk into church on this day every year. My focus is on how forgiving I am to those who don't understand and inadvertently make me feel left out or more worthless than others. My focus is on how much I appreciate those who have listened to my experience and stepped up to remember me or be aware of others who find it hard. And because I have hope in Jesus, I know I'm not forgotten. He doesn't have favourites, it's not something I've done, it's painful but I'm not alone in it. I am blessed beyond measure with or without children. And I do have hope. Until the day I die, I will fight to have hope. But not only keep it, I want to share it. And that's why I have the podcast. And that's why you're listening, because I want you to have a piece of my hope. Because I know that hope is what's got me through. I know it's hope that helps me walk in and out of Mother's Day service. I know it's hope that helps me try to educate friends so they will know and reach out to others. And hope helps me to see that there's so much else out there that is possible, that there's so much more that I can be one day, even if I'm not feeling it right now. Desmond Tutu said, hope is being able to see that there is light despite the darkness. So if nothing else, refocus on hope. Cling to it with your fingernails and I promise it will help you. I'm going to finish now by reading what was read yesterday in our church. It's actually part of a blog called The Messy Middle by Amy Young. And the blog post was called An Open Letter to Pastors, A Non-Mum Speaks About Mother's Day. And she works through some of the, the experiences she's heard about and how hard Mother's Day can be. And she puts some points of ways to make it better. And the second one is called Acknowledge the Wide Continuum of Mothering. And this is what she wrote. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster mums, mentor mums and spiritual mums, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. 
To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you on this day. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who placed children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you. So thank you for listening to the Sign Up Why podcast today. I hope there's been something here that's been of encouragement to you in some way. And if you want to know more about me or the podcast, you can visit thesilentwhy.com or find us on any social media at the Silent Why pod. And I've actually videoed me recording this today to try and turn it into a reel for Instagram. So if you see that, I managed to do it. If you don't see it for a while, I'm still trying to work that out. I'm new to those, so please give me some love if you see it, because they are not easy. If you want to support my work, you can do that at buymeacoffee.com slash the silent why. Everything I do here is pretty much just for free and it's my full-time work at the moment. So any support is very welcome. If you want to hear other episodes with people who have been through childlessness, infertility, miscarriage and child loss, we've got plenty of episodes about that and I'll put some of those links in the show notes. And I hope your next Mother's Day, whenever it is, is full of the peace and the hope that you deserve. Thank you for being with me today and bearing with my ramblings. Hopefully you can join us again next week. Um.